Good evening, and welcome to our Christmas Eve lessons and carols at the First Congregational Church of Bethel, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here in this place and in this time. This is a joyful service of God's beloved children of all ages. We understand there will be some wiggles and some noises. While our song tells us the manger was quiet, we know that there were animal noises and certainly some baby noises. They are welcome this evening, especially as we hear this familiar story of God's love coming into the world anew. Tomorrow, Christmas Day worship will be at 10 a.m., and you are invited to wear your pajamas or comfy clothes as, you, as we sing our story of Christ's birth in a new way. We will share in some breakfast yumminess after worship and then head off to our respective Christmas celebrations. Anywhere you see the asterisk in the bulletin, you are invited to rise in body and or spirit as you are comfortably able. You also note that some of the carols we stand for and others you are invited to remain seated. Our final carol is Silent Night, before which we will pass the light of Christ. Candles will be lit from the Christ candle in the Advent wreath. As the light of Christ comes to you, please tip your unlit candle to the lit candle, and then do so as you pass to your neighbors as well. Let us warm our hearts as we are called to worship and as we light our Advent candle of wreath, the Christ candle. Please join me in the call to worship. An unmarried teenage girl was invited. Carry Christ. An ordinary carpenter was invited. To your father, to a child, unlike you. The shepherds were invited, outcast and isolated, included at the manger. The magi were invited, foreigners, seekers, included at the manger. And if she was invited, and he was invited, and they were invited, then we can trust that we too are invited. This story is for us. Love. Family of faith, this is our invitation. Welcome home. Amen.
We have heard the call to keep watch, but what are we keeping watch over? Maybe we're looking for something that will define us, something that will remake us, transform us, some relationship, some hope, some love that will make us new. Maybe we're looking for the gift we remember this night. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born to us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell, O oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. What we go out to see in the muddle of our world is not necessarily the Christ child or the light that glows within. No, I think what we watch over is the world that he came to save, the masses of humanity who think they can find salvation in the stuff of this life, like we know we do sometimes, when we forget. A world that has room for a savior, even when we've forgotten it. And part of what we're keeping watch for is to see whether we can make room. Room for grace, room for joy, room for peace, even at our worst, at our most needy, and most helpful, and grace-filled. Keep watch. Let us light these candles and complete the circle as we rejoice in the light that shines in the darkness and declare with joy and with hope. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Alleluia. Amen.
The prayer for illumination. Oh, holy God, we need this story, this Christmas story. We need this story of ordinary people who were brave. We need this story of love that changed the world. We need this story of angel choruses that give reason to hope and starlight that reminds us to look up. In a battered and bruised world, we gather around your word like people gather around a fire to warm themselves. So we are here, gathered together to warm ourselves by your light, because we need this story. We need the truth that lies deep in these holy words. So today we pray, scoop out space in us to truly listen, quiet our minds, open our hearts, kindle the fire. Amen. We believe that for generations, people have gathered together on this holy night because there is something about this story that speaks to the deepest part of us. We believe in bundling up this hope, this good news, and passing it on to our children, to our neighbors, to the world around us. I believe my voice can make a difference, just like I believe this story can make a difference, so I will not stay quiet. I will tell this story of a love that make room, makes room for all. I will sing this story of a love that knows our name. I will live this story because love has come again. I believe that words have power. I will not stay quiet. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great life, a light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 35. 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. A reading from Matthew 1, 18 through 23. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and will, unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. 
She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. This readings from Luke, the second chapter, verses one through seven. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Jesus lay down 
The reading is from Luke, chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with a, the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Thank you. 
This reading comes from Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star, as they had seen it at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
As we prepare our hearts and minds for a time of sharing, I invite you to let the spirit of Christ breaking into the world fill your heart. And may you give with that abundant love, whether you give in person this day or online or in some other capacity. Led by the light of faith serenely beaming with glowing hearts, by his cradle we stand. So led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, he came the wise man. From Orient land, the King of Kings lay thus in lovely manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our To our weakness, no stranger, behold your King before him lowly bend. Be Truly he taught us to love one another, his law is love, 
and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is a brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Our praise his name forever. His power and glory. Our reading is John 1, 1 through 5, and 12 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This evening, we celebrate God coming into our world in a new way, breaking into our ordinary through the extraordinary in the unexpected birth of a child. May you know the light of Christ in your light, and may you experience the love of Christ in your heart and throughout your day, always. As we share our light this evening, I remind you to tip your unlit candle to the lit candle. As we pass the light of Christ, we will then sing Silent Night.
Receive these words of benediction. As you leave this place, may you go knowing that from generation to generation, we have been claimed and loved. From generation to generation, God has been by our side. From generation to generation, we are not alone. The God of yesterday and the God of tomorrow knows you by name, loves you, and calls you forth, saying, go, be the person you are called to be, love wildly, do justice, and come back soon. May it be so. Amen.